If you remember back to last summer, it seemed to take forever uh, for the Sven Botman deal to uh, to go through. Uh, was he going to AC Milan? Was he going to Newcastle? Uh, it turned out that Newcastle United was always going to be his destination. Uh, it just took a while to get the deal through. Now, it looks like PSG are wanting Mr. Botman. Uh, we've also got news from Lee Ryder that uh, Eddie Howe is pondering a gamble for the weekend against Wolves. Um, we are now looking at two other left backs as alternatives to Kieran Tini, which is very interesting because, of course, the Arsenal left back uh, was uh, linked with us a few days ago. So quite a lot to get through today. Let's go. This is the Daily News. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Paul and welcome to the Daily News here on this Wednesday evening. And uh, yeah, big story breaking from Mark Douglas uh, was, uh, well, caught me by surprise, I have to say. Uh, he's revealed that uh, French Giants PSG, as you can see on the bottom there, are plotting a summer move for our centre-back Sven Botman. Now, apparently PSG were very, very interested in Botman um, way back when he played for Lille. Uh, but there was never any... Uh, move made to sign him there was never any um open interest there uh but they've always kept an eye on him now it is believed that they are very very impressed with the way uh he's had his first season in the premier league and of course we already know that being newcastle united fans how well he's adjusted to the premier league uh and like a duck to water of course nicknamed the rolls royce for obvious reasons because he's a superb center back and um for me uh is a future captain of newcastle united now obviously you know, getting interest from PSG is massive. And and this is just a, another sign of uh, how far this Newcastle United team have come this season uh, when players are attracting the very, very best clubs in the world. However, however, uh, we are not a selling club anymore. And um, it's, it's the same sort of situation uh, with uh, Bruno, of course, and Real Madrid. And Bruno coming out yesterday and saying, there is no way he is going to Real Madrid. He wants to be part of something big here. He wants to be a legend at the club. And that is fantastic. Fantastic. That's music to our ears to know. And obviously, Newcastle United want to build a team around Bruno. There's no doubt about that. But one of those through the spine of the team is certainly Sven Botman. There's no doubt about it. Um, now, uh, Newcastle have no intention of, of course, selling him. Um, that they have made plain and simple. I mean, it's it's obvious. He's, he hasn't even been here a full season yet. Um but the believing that the players will buy into what we want to do here at Newcastle United, the owners are quite convinced that these top, top players will want to stay because of what's happening and what they've been told is going to happen at Newcastle United. Again, referring back to Bruno, it's all about success, winning trophies, Champions League football. Sven Botman is still very, very young, remember. So he's got years left on the clock and, you know, he could become, like Bruno, massive at this football club. And and when you look at the two players that you want in the spine of a team, certainly in defence and, and midfield, you're going to look at the likes of Bruno. You're going to look at the likes of Botman. Uh, and of course, Nick Pope in goal. You've got a, the striker situation needs sorting out, yes, but there is practically all the spine of the team right up the middle of the park with those three players right there. So, of course... No need to sell. Uh, Newcastle United, of course, are looking at selling players in the summer, but uh, apparently it's going to be the likes of you know Ryan Fraser, Kieran Clark, uh, and the rest of them who we know who are running out of contracts. Matt Ritchie, uh, Jamal Lascelles will probably be looking for a new club. So there is going to be players going out the door, but Newcastle are adamant that it won't be their big players. And, you know, PSG can come knocking on the door all they want. Uh, they'll just get a swift no from Newcastle United. And, of course, it's hoped that Sven Botman himself, um, like Bruno, will just turn around and say, sorry, no way. This is a project I want to be part of. This is going to be absolutely huge at Newcastle United. Now, Eddie Howe has been, um, you know probably pondering for quite a few weeks now about his striker situation and when you think about it you look at Callum Wilson not quite in form uh Alexander Isak chomping at the bit to get in um who does he play against Wolves now Lee Ryder believes that uh Eddie Howe is going to take a gamble um and that gamble is going to be taking Wilson out of the firing line and playing Isak now for me is it a massive gamble playing Isak instead of Wilson not for me um, Isak, you know, there's a reason we paid 60 million quid for this guy. Um, so for me, him coming in for Wilson, 
it's not quite a, a, you know a sensational story or it's not a massive gamble. Um, you know, it's it's who the wingers are going to be for me. That's that's the gamble. You know, if he if he pulls uh, Miggy out of the lineup and puts Anthony Gordon there, or he puts Jacob Murphy there, maybe takes Maxi out as well, puts another one there. That is a gamble for me. That is what the gamble is going to be for Sunday. I don't believe Isak is a gamble. I think he needs a run of games in the team. But again, you know, the media seem to put all this pressure on saying, oh, it's a massive gamble if he takes Wilson out. It's not a massive gamble if he takes Wilson out. Wilson's been bang average for a few games now and needs a rest. I think he just needs time out, refocus, re-energize and come back like the deadly striker that we know he is. I'm not writing Callum Wilson off by any stretch of the imagination. I've seen people, you know, talking, saying, oh, is his future over at Newcastle United? No, it's not, right? Wilson is a deadly striker, but he's just not in form. And when you're not in form, you don't play, providing you've got somebody there who is good enough to come in and take your place. And Isak certainly is. So for me... I'm not really considering it as a gamble. When I see the team lined up on Sunday afternoon before kickoff, if he's going with some different wingers, I might see that as a different sort of gamble or a different formation. That's a gamble. But replacing Isak with Wilson, for me, not so much a gamble. Now, Amnesty International, our old friends again, have uh, uh, made their feelings very strong again today in uh, mentioning that they are very very disappointed and angry at the Premier League uh, that they still have not uh, shown any action to Newcastle United for this uh, the, the Saudi state owning us or potentially owning us or uh, allegedly owning us. Um, it's it's just going to drag on. It really is going to drag on. I, I don't know what anybody can do about this situation, quite honestly. Uh, we spoke about it a lot last week when uh, the story first broke. And for me, nothing can happen. It's just amnesty kicking off, as many, many people have. But look, keep it away from football, as we've said time and time again. Um, you know, Newcastle passed that test, um, and we all think it was down to piracy more than anything else. That got sorted, the, the, the takeover went through. So, again, I don't think there's anything that the Premier League can do. Um, now, Saturday, Sunday's referee has been named, and it's going to be Andy Madley. Uh, he last took uh, charge of a Newcastle game, uh, which was the 0-0 draw against Arsenal. Um, now, finally, Kieran Tierney is a defender that is very, very highly rated, of course, the Arsenal left-back. And uh, he has been linked with Newcastle United uh, many times in the last few days from various media outlets. Uh, but it is believed, uh, reported by Mark Carruthers, that Newcastle United have turned their attention maybe to two alternatives. Um, and one of them we spoke about on the transfer show the other night. Uh, that is Alex Grimaldo, of course, from Benfica. Um, he will be a free agent in the summer. And uh, we, we've took a look at his stats. He, he looks absolutely superb what a player this guy is and certainly somebody that could uh, definitely fill that void at left back uh, however we also know there's going to be massive massive interest in him and clubs such as Juventus Atletico Madrid and Bayer Leverkusen have already expressed an interest in the uh, in the way left left back so you know again we're shopping at the top table aren't we so we've got to we've got to expect the other big teams from around the world to be interested in these similar sort of players the other guy who we're interested in um is defender Federico De Marco from Inter Milan. Now, he's 25-year-old, but he's still under contract for a few years yet. Uh, and it's believed that Newcastle United scouts have actually watched this guy. Um, but the valuation of him would be in excess of 35 million quid. Um, now, I would, I would think if Newcastle United could get Grimaldo on a free... And of course, if they can get him on a free, remember, they can offer higher wages than what they could to DeMarco. So I would say Grimaldo would probably be a higher target than what Grimaldo would, sorry, than what um, DeMarco would. So um, it's interesting whether they go for Kieran Tini or not. Tini, for me, as I've said many times, is a, is a risk uh, simply because uh, of his injury record. But when Alex did show the stats the other day for T uh, Tini's injury record, it wasn't as bad as we thought. Yes, he's had a few long-term ones, but it's not quite that bad. But that wasn't taken into account this season, um, where he's also suffered uh, some long-term injuries as well. But you know what? Grimaldo, for me, would be the number one. Out of certainly those three, in, in, in Tierney, DeMarco or Grimaldo, he would 
certainly be the one that uh, that I would love to sign. His stats prove what a good player he is. He's, he's awesome. He gets up and down the pitch. He's, he's got pace. Of course, scored against us from a free kick uh, in the friendly uh, earlier this season uh, in pre-season. So he's, he's got all the calibre to be a fantastic left back, but that's what's obviously attracting some of the bigger teams as well. Um, but there you go, guys. Let me know what you think of uh, PSG plotting a sneaky move for Botman. Um, I don't think it's going to happen in the slightest, but you know what these uh, European teams are like? Certainly the PSGs of this world think they can just swoop in and take any player they want. Not anymore with Newcastle United, that's a certainty. Uh, hopefully he feels the same way as Bruno and wants to be part of this massive project at Newcastle United. Which left back would you go for out of those three? Um, are you interested in who's going to play up front? Is it a gamble if he sack players? Or is it a gamble if he changes formation or wingers? Let me know about all the stories that I've gone through today, guys. It's great to get your opinion on everything. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. And if you have enjoyed today's video, please, like I said earlier at the start, hit that like button. It does help the channel move up those search results. And of course, if you're new and like what you see, come and be part of this fabulous community with the Toon Review, heading towards 18,000. Hit the subscribe button. It is free to do so. And of course, that notification bell, which will let you know when we go live or we upload any videos but in the meantime guys have a fantastic rest of the wednesday and uh, we'll see you soon take care